how has the so-called bear problem evolved? I would say, how has the, um, the people problem evolved? And the people problem has greatly improved. I really think that collectively, uh, North American society, Canadian society, and the national provincial parks in particular have a great deal to congratulate themselves on in terms of really improving our relationship with bears over the last 20 to 30 years. When I first started working uh, as a biologist uh, many, many years ago in the, in the mountain national parks, the place where you found grizzly bears was in garbage dumps because we had open garbage dumps everywhere. Um, there, was a, there was grizzly bears and black bears being shot every year by park wardens because they were always getting into uh, open garbage bins. Uh, people were feeding them. Situations were developing that you just don't see today. The closure of the dumps and the institution shortly thereafter unfortunately not at the same time, but eventually of bear-proof garbage systems was really, really an important step. Because what it, what it enabled us to do was to separate out the food connection with people from everything else that goes on between bears and, and humans. It made possible, I think, a more secure and confident um, dynamic between people and bears. You weren't worried about the experiences as much of the next bear you met as you would have been before then. And when you did see a bear, it was no longer entertaining you. It was living a life in a natural environment. That was a really important step. It made a lot of things possible and really moved our, our relationship with bears to a different space. I think the two chapters were really closing down the garbage dumps and creating new possibilities. And then through those new possibilities, starting to imagine a possibility where we manage not around fear, but around connection. I think longer term, the biggest issue that uh, bears face is... Um, the same problem that national parks face, which is public support. Our relationship with bears is always a bit ambivalent. These animals are more powerful than us. They don't agree with us that we happen to be the crown of creation. They can kill us, and periodically they do kill us. And um, every time you have a bear issue, a bear attack, it spawns a, a very intense reaction, far more intense than a vehicle accident or a 22-year-old falling off Tunnel Mountain or something like that. Those really engage the public imagination. And as we become increasingly urbanized, increasingly disconnected with nature, people start to imagine our relationship with bears and, and our relationship with the wild in a different way. So I think it's really important that we um, continue to find ways to put bears and what they represent in terms of wildness and nature into people's lives no matter where they live. I think that's a big project for the national parks. Not everybody's going to visit these places. But the future of the animals that live in these places depend on the decisions that the people that vote for our politicians, that set our public funding priorities, that uh, decide what their views are on wildlife management policies. Uh, the future depends on those people. So um, they've got to value bears. And, and so I think that's the risk is that uh, an urbanized society, uh, people distracted by a thousand competing uh, things for their attention, people losing attention spans because of the bombardment of images and, and el electronic media, and people that just really no longer know that uh, as human beings we are a product of nature, those people are the ones that are going to give these bears a future. And we can't just have them thinking about bears every time somebody gets chewed up by one. So I think that's probably our biggest long-term challenge is that um, we cannot let Canada get orphaned from nature.